Part of the records gathering process with an occlusal analysis is taking a FACEBO transfer. And it's funny because I think back in dental school, um, some of the instrumentation we had back then, it, it just was not a very fun process um, in terms of not only how the face bows were designed, but I, I don't think I really had a good understanding of why we needed to do it. And remember that the most important thing when we're looking at casts and we're, we're analyzing our casts, it's not just looking at teeth and wear facets, but being able to look of the arc of, of closure um, precisely on the instrument as it's happening in the patient. So if we have a face bow that uh, will relate the, the maxillary arch to the precise distance from those maxillary anterior teeth to the condyles on the articulator as it is in the patient, then that arc of opening and closing is going to be the same. And that's, that's the first job of a good face bow transfer. The second thing that I, I think is really misunderstood that's really, really important in aesthetic dentistry is the understanding that that maxillary cast has to be hanging on the articulator precisely how the maxilla is hanging in the patient's head. And so there's lots of times we see people whose maxillary planes are canted. And if we don't have an accurate depiction of that, when it comes time to waxing the case up, uh, if we just hand articulate those models, it's very likely that we might straighten it on the articulator, wax things up, and we put it back in the patient's mouth with the provisionals, and the can't exist. This is a really nice example of a patient that we're doing on Monday. And you look at this guy's maxillary occlusal plane, and there is an absolute tremendous can't to it. Now, in the photographic section, I'm going to show you a photograph we take to make sure that if we see a can't like this, that it, exact, it actually exists in the patient. We actually call it our Facebook verification photograph, and I'll go over that with you in another segment. But the point here is, is this, this patient is having this work done to correct it. Since this maxillary cast is mounted properly, when I correct this plane, when I put the provisionals in the patient's head, he's going to be level. And that, to me, is one of the most important things. So what I want to do is also go over with you some of the things in this records gathering process with the occlusal analysis of what the doctor needs to do and what the team can, can really do for the doctor. To me, it is absolutely critical that the doctor does centric relation records, that they are the person that finds and verifies and records that. That's not something we want to delegate. But there's also no question that the Facebook transfer is a very, very easily delegatable um, uh, process to somebody who's trained. And so what we're going to do in this segment is show you how uh, Mariah will take this Facebook transfer and literally how little time it uh, uh, takes to do it properly. Okay, to start this process, we're going to be using something called the Reference Plane Locator, which is a, looks like a little ruler that has one aspect of it that will go on the patient's lateral incisor, and once it's sitting on the lateral, it makes a little uh, point up on the lateral aspect uh, of her, the right part of her nose. We just take the little marker and make a little dot. And as you'll see, that little dot is going to become important for us to know where the face bow is going to sit on her face, uh, sort of in, a, in the vertical plane. Because one of the things that happens in a lot of other systems is people with longer faces, people that have maybe some, uh, something that's slightly out of the norm, you end up with the cast not centered on the articulator. The maxillary cast often ends up very high with very canted occlusal planes. And one of the things that I think is so interesting about this face bow system is that is just about completely eliminated. The next thing we're going to do is, is stabilize the bite fork. And we like to utilize um, just a polyvinyl material this happens to be just a, a bite registration, a polyvinyl bite registration material that is going to be squirted on the bite fork. You can also use compound if you prefer that. This just seems to be very, very easy. And she's just going to pause outside of her mouth just for a second so you can see it. All right. And what we're going to do is that little line on the face bow is always going to be up. And we're going to go ahead and just seat it 
against her teeth and use a light bite for or a, a large cotton roll to stabilize it. And what I like about this is notice now this thing is pretty much on there. Once that gets nice and hard, there's only one place that that fits. And here again, I've seen doctors trying to uh, you know, have the patient hold it there. And this is just a really simple way to get that uh, part of this process uh, done. So the next thing we're going to do, make sure that that's setting up okay, is get the ear bow. And we can go ahead and get the ear bow in place. Now the ear bow has two components to it. It's the part that's going to go in the patient's ear, and then there is the transfer jig. And the transfer jig is the removable part that you will become familiar with when we start talking about mounting casts. So what we're going to do now is attach the face bow to the head. And notice the transfer jig has something that slides on to the bite fork. And the, we're going to have the patient help us here by guiding the face bow into, the, into their ears. Now notice what's happened here is the face bow is now on their face and the bite fork is attached to the maxillary arch and so we have uh, some of the basics here. Now one of the most important aspects of this procedure is now aligning the infraorbital pointer to the previously placed red dot on the lateral aspect of her nose. This is what's so critical about this face bow because this will center your cast on the articulator every single time. It's really uh, so simple but unique to the system and just makes it great. So we're going to go ahead and, and get that attached. Okay, with the patient sitting on the side of the dental chair now, what we can assess is making sure that the face bow is level with the earth. And I want you to think about that because when your articulator is sitting on a lab bench top, on a bench top in a laboratory, the top of that articulator is going to be level with the planet, okay? And so it's important then that, that we understand that this face bow has to be parallel with the top of the articulator. The only way to do that is to have some reference point. And as Pete has said, using an interpupular line is one option, but it is possible for that plane to be off. So I love the fact that um, Whitmix has placed levels on the face bow. So if you look at Ann now, Notice that the face bow is on her face. We've tightened number one, okay, and got it right where it's supposed to be vertically. But now we're going to look at it horizontally, and we see that that bubble is slightly off. Without taking the face bow out of the patient's ears, what Mariah can do is just very simply move it in the patient's ears till that's level, and then reach down and tighten the second one. Now what we've just accomplished there is taken this face bow so that it's going to be properly centered on the articulator vertically and we've now just paralleled that face bow uh, so it'll be directly parallel with the top of that articulator. And again, the key point here is any cants that exist in this patient will be seen on this articulator. That maxillary cast is going to be hanging on that instrument exactly how the maxilla is hanging in the patient's head. Okay, so at this point, all we have to do is just un, uh, loosen up that face bow, patient opens up, and we're done.